name is Chef Eve DeShane, and today we're in the Greener Villages Learning Kitchen with uh, Chef Nang from the Green Thai Chef. Welcome, Chef. How are thank you Thank you today? very much. I'm doing great. It's uh, fantastic to be here, and thank you for inviting me here. What an uh, amazing occasion to, to get to cook with you again. Right on. Well, Chef, the first time we met, you were doing uh, a Cook for the Cure, Cook for Cancer, and you needed a, a space. So... Um, Welcome again, yeah. and uh, today you're going to be cooking something else for us, another Thai dish. I am. I'm. Um, one of the things I do in in um, my catering, uh, home catering business, is uh, we I, I bring a bit of my my story, my narrative to the table, and I always talk about I never cook pad Thai for them because everybody has their own um, interpretation of what pad Thai tastes like already because it's a very common Thai dish to, to uh, eat, especially here in Canada. So I've decided that um, today I'm going to elevate and deconstruct Pad Thai for you. So we're going to make a Pad Thai rice paper wrap. Oh, that, 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 that sounds fun. Yeah. Um, I do like Pad Thai, and I've tasted very various amounts of Pad Thai over the years. Uh, some good, some not mm. so good. Um, and uh, no, that's fantastic. And you're saying you put a little bit of your journey and uh, a little bit of you in every dish. So tell us a little bit about you, Chef. Um, I, I was born in Thailand and I um, grew up in Australia. So we moved to Australia when I was three. My mother had Thai restaurants growing up. So I was that Asian kid in the corner doing his homework uh, in the Thai restaurant. So I grew up in the Thai industry, I, in the Thai restaurant industry. I, looked, I learned to love and hate Thai restaurant foods. Um, but um, I was able to fall in love with it again um, when I moved to Thailand to teach. Uh, and it was then that I really, and Pad Thai is a perfect example, I learned to really love the different varieties and the different uh, background that each dish brings to, to the table. So um, that's where I learned to love Thai food again was when I went back to teach in Thailand. And I worked in some amazing restaurants and hotels and I learned to really know what hard work was. Yes. And anyone in the restaurant industry, my hat's off to you. I tip my hat to you because it's one of the hardest industry you can be in. It's, and, um, and I learned that and I, I realized that the passion of, of cooking my own dish was, was slowly seeping out of what, what I enjoyed. And so I left, I left the culinary world and took up the education world and went to university and became a teacher. A cook's always a cook, and if you've grown up in Thai restaurants, like you said, doing your homework in the corner while pans are sizzling and pots are clanging, I mean, it's ingrained in you. So I guess, is that why you're doing this for everyone else? So, yeah. So when I go to people's homes, I, I do, it's like I, I run a, a private dinner experience for, for the people um, at the dinner party. So they invite me into their home and I, I do a six course, six to seven course tasting menu. And each dish has an element of me, uh, an element of my, my story, um, and a huge part of Thai flavors, traditional Thai flavors. So um, I, I aim to bring my story and a bit of Thailand into their home and also elevate it a little bit. So make it, um, make it a, a way that you, they're almost in a restaurant. Um, they're, they're enjoying this dish that's getting served to them like a tasting menu style. So I, I like to think mine's an elevated Thai dining experience in your own home. So you're kind of like a cookbook come to life, are you? A hundred percent. And, and I, I always talk about this in my dinner is they could be eating the same dish in another Thai restaurant. It could be exactly the same, but if there's no narrative, if there isn't a connection, um, you kind of lose a little bit of that. And because I put a narrative and put add a connection, it becomes their story. So, you know, my Pad Thai story in instantly becomes their Pad Thai story. Did you start this business in Fredericton or did you start this beforehand and then just kind of import it into Fredericton? I, I have a great story and it's a story I always share uh, before with my first dish because uh, it's how I uh, this came to be. I, um, I moved here uh, after meeting my wife and we settled and I couldn't get a teaching job here uh, and I had to I had to get all my qualification uh, transferred over and um, I was trying to get more teaching work and I couldn't do it and my mother who owns Thai restaurants uh, came and visited and my mother is 
uh, a lady who's this tall and she can scare you just by looking at you. And she came in and said, uh, what are you doing for work? And I said, well, I'm a stay at home dad. And cause we, my wife and I just had a, a newborn. And she looked at me and I, my legs started shaking and she's like, no, 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 that's not happening. So I was like, well, what would you like me to do, mom? I don't want to have a restaurant. I don't want a, my daughter to be that kid in the, the corner doing their homework. So she said, no, no, you're gonna cook out of your home and you're gonna sell it to people in, the, in your neighborhood. And that's what happened. So people in our neighborhood, friends of ours would put their order in on, you know, on a, on a Monday. And then on a Friday, they'd knock on the door and I'd have their food ready for them and they'd take it home and have that for the weekend. It sounds like a great idea, right? But the w we weren't making any money. It was just enough to cover the food costs and you know, the fire alarm would be going off and I have the baby crying and people would be knocking on the door to pick up their food. But I did it for my mum, right? Yeah. But what an amazing journey, because from that, um, uh, we're from a family of, of, of chefs and, and restaurant owners and my brother who has an amazing restaurant in Australia came and visited and he, uh, he said, what are you doing? <laughs> this is yeah. a mess. And I said, I know, but mum made me do it, right? And, uh, and, and he said, uh, we can do better. I said, I, I agree. So we sat down and we designed a tasting menu and we originally, we, um, we deconstructed all these different Thai dishes and thought how to present it. And um, when we first started, it was 10 courses and it was, and I was charging next to nothing per person. And, um, and we made no money and we had two garbage bags of food waste because no one could eat 10 courses. I think, uh, I think we're com coming into three, four years. Now we fine tune the tastes, the menu, the dishes, and where we're food costs and, and, and as far as portion size, it's we're, we've hit the peak. So we've got the flavors and the plating pretty much on, on key right now. I know how hard it is to get those tight margins and trying to get that, you know, you always think, well, it's easy. I, I've seen people do it, but yeah. you're right. The family and work, and it, it is, it, yeah. it's a hard transition. I'm happy that you found your place, and it's really nice. So you're, you're bringing a story along with it. I'm, that, that's great, and that's why I wanted to share awesome. your story with everyone here today, too. Thank it, you, yeah. It, it, it's fantastic. So you're making pad thai for us today, but you, like you said, a deconstructed pad thai. How, how is it deconstructed? Just walk me through that okay, a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make the, the pad thai noodles with the, the, the same pad thai flavors, but all the extra ingredients that we would add, like shrimp and um, bean sprouts and uh, green onions, uh, we're going to add that at the very end, uh, rather than stir frying the, with the noodles, we're going to add it at the very end with the paper wrap. So we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats with Chef Eve. Uh, we're here in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Chef Nang, and he's going to show us how to make his uh, new recipe, a, uh, a pad thai spring roll. The first part is we've got to make the pad thai noodles. Um, so uh, a nice hot wok would be awesome. Get that heated up, because in classic Thai cooking, you, uh, the, it's usually fired up. Everything's just hot. I, my wife always criticized, why am I cooking everything on, on high heat? because that's the Thai in me. Um, before we start that, we're gonna add some hot boiling water into a bowl with the uh, rice noodles. While that uh, softens, we'll start uh, cooking some of the ingredients here and prepping some of the ingredients, and then, uh, and then we'll add our noodles at the end. It's very important not to over soak these noodles because they're gonna cook as well in the wok, and then the last thing you want is for your noodles to fall apart. Step one, I'm gonna uh, cut up these onions um, and in, in Thai cooking, uh, very rarely do we uh, uh, dice our onions because it's all really lust, rustic cuts, right? So everything's just rustic, uh, big cuts. And, um, and, and if you think about it, it's when they, when they first made these dishes, it wasn't like as refined as French cooking, right? So if we're talking about French cooking, that's kind of what we call Lyonnaise or, uh, or a quick julienne. 
Okay, and then I'll add my oil. Uh, as you know, like in a lot of Thai cooking, we use a lot of oil. I'm gonna finish this off. So we'll get back to the noodles, chef. I noticed that we put uh, we put hot water on them. We didn't boil water like a traditional pasta or anything like that. No. Um, is it because it, you can control the the level of cook and gives you the time, or is it just a hundred percent? And rice noodles are very different to wheat noodles, right? Wheat noodles need a lot more heat and a lot more time to cook. Rice noodles are a lot more sensitive, right? No, absolutely. Okay, okay we're gonna add the onion. Okay, he's gonna make that perfect wok sound. And that's it too, when you're using a wok, it's always high heat. You're 100%. stirring and you're frying, right? 100%, yes. Okay, and add a little bit of garlic. Once again, garlic's are rough cuts too. You don't want to overcook that, you just want the flavours, you want uh, just to sweat it out. Now. Uh, a secret of Pad Thai is people always talk about the egg, right? Like, how do you get the egg just right? Um, egg's a huge component of Pad Thai. And you gotta almost like do, do it like an omelette. So, um, you push your onions and garlic to the side, and then you just crack. And then you break the egg up, and you have it cooked on the side there, lightly fried. And once that cooks, then you break the egg up so it's in chunks. And then you'll mix it in with the noodles. Okay, because you don't want to mix it in while the egg is, isn't cooked because then it just um, uh, mushes up with the noodles and you don't want that. So you want like... So you want a fried, firm egg, so you want to make sure that it's well, well uh, cooked? 100%. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm going to check on my noodles, and that's perfect. Okay. I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to drain this, that right, Chef? Absolutely. So it really only took maybe three or four minutes for those noodles to get uh, to get nice and soft. Yeah, and if anything, like it's probably a little bit too much now. Uh, we have to be careful, and this is where you don't want to overcook it because it's going to cook again in in this pan. So I'm going to pick the noodles up. It's going to fry up because of the water. Thank you, Chef. Okay, now we add our flavours. So, let's talk about tamarind. So, we're going to use um, tamarind sauce. Tamarind is a classic Asian flavour. It comes from, it looks like a bean, but it's very much, we were talking about it's very yeah. much like a date. Um, it grows on um, a tree in. in, in uh, uh, a lot of Asian countries. Um, it's that classic Asian flavor where it's uh, s s sweet and sour and a little bit tangy. A good substitute for tamarind, I wouldn't say good, and a lot of uh, Thai people would, uh, would be scolding me here, is um, tomato sauce, right? And you probably hear that a lot. And that's because of it's that sw slight sweet tanginess uh, in a tomato sauce. And we have some fish sauce here. I'm gonna add a little bit of that because once again you want that classic Asian flavor of salty of ferment. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then a little bit of soy sauce uh, for salty and a bit of color. Something very important and not not really recognized and because people think Pad Thai is super healthy. There's actually a lot of sugar okay. placed in Pad Thai, and very good Pad Thai. And you see the ladies in the street, they literally get their huge scoop of, of sugar and would add to it. So I'm going to add probably half the amount okay. because um, we're going to have a dipping sauce. So that's about, would you say? A couple tablespoons? Yep, two, ta two, three tablespoons of sugar. It's all cooked. So that's going to be our base for our, our noodles because Thai food, needs a little little spice pickup. So we're going to add a little bit of um, uh, ground chili, chili flakes, okay? Um, and then we're going to add that again later on in our dipping sauce. So, but right now we have a base of a pad thai. Normally we'd add the shrimp here too, but like okay. I said, we're going to deconstruct it. We're going to have this noodle base and, and then we're going to layer it with uh, the other ingredients that normally would go in this pad thai dish. Okay, so 
We're going to leave this here. Okay, we don't want this to cook too much. I'm going to take it off the heat. And I'm going to work on the dipping sauce. I'm going to add soy sauce. We're going to add the remainder of the tamarind. So that's about a teaspoon of tamarind. We don't need too much because um, it's just for that tang and, and sour, sour taste. And that I just add two, ta two teaspoons of sugar in this because we want it to uh, be sweet. Uh, there's a huge influence of Chinese food in Thailand. And a, and a huge part of that is because there's a huge Chinese population in yep, Thailand. Yep. And, and Chinese New Year is one of the biggest New Year's uh, celebration in Thailand. So, but that also seeps into the, the, the food, right, the culinary side. And people talk about, oh, do Thai people use chopsticks? Yeah, we use chopsticks when we eat our, our, our noodles and things like that. But that influence came from Chinese. So um, I'm going to need some lime. Okay, okay we're going to squeeze a little bit of lime in, into this. And I'm going to add a little chili flakes. Probably half a teaspoon or to your own flavors, really. So what we're creating here is uh, a different uh, type of pad thai flavor. Okay. So it's uh, just a dipping sauce for pad thai. And I'm going to add a little bit of green of um, cilantro here, its freshness. And that's our dipping sauce. I'm going to add it in this terrine here. Again, like we said, food is visual. It's not just for sustenance sometimes. A hundred percent, yeah. I, I, so I cut these um, green onions into finger size. And um, so that's going to go into our wrap. Okay, so right now we're going to crush these peanuts. And the reason being is uh, you don't want a huge chunk of peanuts while you're eating. And obviously with allergies now, people can choose to have peanuts or not. So the best way to crush it, I find, is to put it in a bag get a rolling pin and then just uh, just just do lightly crush it. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the uh, learning kitchen here at the Greener Village with Chef Nang, and we're going to build uh, these Pad Thai spring rolls. So Chef, um, I've always had trouble with these rice papers. I've never had the vessel big enough to dip. I always dip too many at a time. So uh, show us, how do you make this work properly? Okay. Or what's the easiest way to wrap with these rice okay. paper? Start from the end and you just like, just move it through and just lightly wet it. Because once, once it gets wet, it'll continue to soften. So it doesn't have to be soaking wet. You don't need to soak it, no. Okay. But you do need to make sure that, that it reaches every surface um, of the, the wrap. This would be a good way to do it. You just make it a little circle, okay? You want it soft enough that you can manipulate it without it breaking. Okay. Uh, and that's really all you need. So right now, we're getting pretty close, so. All right, you do that, and I'll we'll okay. get the second one ready. Here. So we're gonna start with the base and the main drive of our dish, which is the pad thai. So the noodles will go Right in the middle there, a little bit in the center. Now we're going to start building it, right? We're going to start constructing our pad thai. So uh, we talked about layers. So in a pad thai, um, we'll add the bean sprouts. So this would be a garnish on a pad thai. Julienne carrots here. We'll add, give it a, uh, another fresh, fresh crunch, but also some color. And then we have our green onions, which will give it a tiny little spice. Okay, yeah. Um, and also that fresh greenery. And then we're going to finish it off with our shrimp. Okay, so normally these shrimps would be cooked in with the pad thai. Like I said, we're going to de uh, deconstruct it, right? So th the shrimp, depending on the size of the shrimp, you add maybe two, three, or maybe four in a line up there. And then our crushed peanuts, just do a little sprinkle. Okay. And then we'll add some, finally, fresh cilantro on top here. And now we're gonna roll. Okay, so to roll, I start with the side. And you can see it continues to soften. And then the side like that. And you wanna keep these really packed. So I'm gonna start from the front, I mean from the back, and then I'm gonna bring the wrap. So just like rolling a burrito, a wrap, or anything else like that. 100%. 
There's the second Thank one you here, Chef. Chef. Okay. So again, we'll start with the pad thai. So you're using shrimp. Um, can you make these vegetarian? 100%. Yeah. This is one of those perfect dish that you can actually make vegan or vegetarian. And you can make these any size you want as well, Chef, right? You can yes. make these for one big appetizer or just for a nice cocktail party. These are perfect finger food. One Thank last you, one there. Okay. And then once again, we'll get this pad thai noodle. Now you say you carry your priorities and stuff like that. So uh, do you go from, well, how intimate to how big do you offer these? My favorite number, chef, is maybe 10. Okay. Okay. And, and that allows me to, to really engage wi with the, the guests. Every dinner is different. I've done bachelorettes, I've done uh, you know, reunions, birthdays. Uh, so I've done everything. When someone invites you to their home, absolutely, that's a that's a big deal, you know. And um, but it's also they're also or automatically at ease. Yes, they're in the comfort of their own home. When they invite me into their home, it, how grateful I am for that because that alone is is a big secure like trust. And then I have to trust them uh, to allow me to present my food to them. So there's, there's, it's a two-way trust and, and it's a very beautiful symbiotic relationship. Well, and I always say it, it is. Food brings people together. Um, you pr give them the vehicle and you're sharing their story. And again, you're probably getting a lot of stories shared with you. So again, yeah, I, I don't envy you because it's a lot of work, Chef. Um, it's kind of like when I teach my classes here, I mm. get to know the individuals that are taking part and you kind of learn their story, they learn your story. You forget how universal that is. It food, is yeah. food is so universal and it's so, so, so beautiful how we, we share our, our culture and our ways with people through food. Well, Chef, thank okay. you so much for taking time out of your day today to, uh, to share your story and to, to share this new recipe with us today. Thank you, Chef. It's been a, an amazing experience. I can't wait to try this with you. A person with nut allergies would not survive in Thailand. I apologize to anybody like that because peanuts is a staple of oh, so many Thai dishes, from tea, peanut oils to, um, <laughs> to peanuts in ice cream. Well, yeah. I mean, if that's what they grow, then that's what they use, yeah. I guess. Okay, chef. Beautiful dish. Deconstructed pad thai rice paper wrap, even better, with a pad thai dipping sauce. So the dipping sauce will be sweet and salty and tangy. We talk about that tangy taste, yep. which is the tamarind. Um, so that's a smack of pad thai sauce. So usually that is quite subtle because it's folded into uh, stir fried into the noodles. So right now you're going to get the subtleness here and then you're going to get the smack in the face of Pad Thai there. So you can choose your own adventure here, Chef. Okay, so you can just, you can be as, you can go in full. Mm. It's fantastic, Chef. Exactly what it is. It's all those nice flavors of the bad Thai, but handheld. Really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you.